Faye McGuinness and I'm the Head of Workplace Wellbeing Programmes at the mental health charity MIND. Um, MIND is the largest mental health charity in the UK and we exist to make sure that anybody with a mental health problem gets the right support and respect that they deserve. And we also have a goal at MIND to support 1 million people to have good mental health at work by uh, 2021. So today I'm going to be talking through the lens of mental health. And I wanted to start by sharing some um, headlines from our Mind and Coronavirus survey that we've been running for the past five weeks to give you a bit of an indication in the UK about how um, coronavirus is impacting on people's mental health. So we've spoken to um, over 17,000 people now and we're continuing this survey for another few weeks. But what we've learned by talking to those people is that just under two thirds of them have said that their mental health has got worse during lockdown. And that's due to restic the restrictions on not being able to go outside, feeling isolated and not being able to see people, and real anxiety about mainly their family and friends getting the coronavirus. What we've also seen is that nearly half of those respondents are actually coping by um, taking on negative habits. So eating too much or little, drinking alcohol or using illegal drugs. And actually we're seeing between um, 18 and 24 year olds that a third of those people are using self-harm as a coping strategy. And what we're also seeing is that many people that are trying to reach out for mental health support are not accessing the support that they need at this time. So we know already that the coronavirus is having a huge impact on the nation's mental health. Then if we look specifically at the workplace, I think it's really important to talk about what happened, at the, what happened before COVID-19 and what the picture was at that time. Because it's really important to say that before COVID-19 hit, we were already seeing huge issues in terms of mental health in the workplace. So in January this year, Deloitte carried out uh, a review uh, to look at what the costs were for UK employers. And the cost to UK employers of poor mental health at work is £45 billion every year. And £29 billion of that is made up of presenteeism costs. So people being in work but not being as productive as they might be because they're not getting the right support or they're not being as productive because they're not feeling very well. But also this idea that people were working very, very long hours, but those hours were not very productive because, again, they weren't getting the right support around their mental health and well-being. So before COVID-19, there was already a huge issue in terms of mental health in the workplace. And as we've moved into COVID-19, lots of those issues have now been really highlighted. But what I think COVID-19 does do is provide us with a real opportunity to start to really tackle some of those drivers of poor mental health at work. And we know that many organisations were already starting to do that. But actually what we're, what we're starting to see is organisations moving much quickly along that journey as a result of COVID-19. So in, in terms of some of the challenges that we're seeing in, and in terms of some of the responses, I mean, I could talk about this all day because there's lots, um, but at Mind, what we've been thinking about is kind of key groups. So we have a group of people that are working from home. They're still being paid. They're still doing their jobs, but they're finding themselves working in a completely different way. And it's really important that you're thinking about those groups of people and what they need in terms of maintaining their mental health and well-being. But then we've got a group of people that are maybe not working at the moment. They've been furloughed, they've been made redundant, people are losing their businesses, and actually understanding the impact on that group and the impact of their mental health and well-being. And then we've got the group of people who we call our frontline and key workers. So those people that are currently still going into their workplace, but actually they're putting their lives at risk in doing so. And so you then have to think about the impact of their mental health and well-being. So we've got all of these groups within our workplaces and actually, we need to think about what is our role as an employer to support the mental health and well-being of these groups, but what's the role of individuals to look after their own mental health and well-being during this time? And so some of the guiding principles, because uh, I don't have a huge amount of time to go into the detail of it, but some of the guiding principles that we think that uh, employers and HR lead should be thinking about is one, understanding the current issues that are facing your workforce in terms of mental health and well-being. You know, we talk a lot about kind of the yearly staff survey, understanding, you know, what, what people are feeling once a year. But I know that when I do my yearly staff survey, if I complete it on a Monday compared to a Friday, you're going to get a very, very different result. Now, more than ever, you need to be doing regular pulse checks to understand what some of the fears are that your employees are feeling around COVID-19, but particularly in relation to their mental health and well-being. So understand the issues, talk to your staff. 
Secondly, we know that mental health stigma is still a huge issue and the workplace is where most people face that stigma. So actually, we need to be doing a lot of work to think about how we continue to break down that stigma and communicate to people that right now it's okay not to feel okay. I'm doing a lot of work with the NHS and we're hearing that the uh, hero narrative, which is very, very well intentioned, is actually driving people to think that they cannot put their hand up and say, I'm actually struggling. So that kind of bravery hero narrative, although well intentioned, is actually a double edged sword. So you really need to be thinking about the messages you're putting out in your organisation around mental health and saying to your staff, please reach out if you're struggling. Then there's something there around everybody having some level of mental health awareness. More than ever, we're going to have to support and have conversations with our teams, our managers, our colleagues. So making sure that everybody in your organisation has some level of mental health awareness is absolutely vital. You don't have to be mental health professionals, but what you can do is you can listen and you can signpost. So if you don't already do that within your organisations, making sure that you deliver some kind of mental health awareness training is vital. and We deliver that training at mind. But you also make, need to make sure that your line managers have the capability to have conversations. We hear all the time from line managers that they feel completely nervous about approaching the conversation around mental health because they don't have the skills or necessarily the ability to start those conversations. So we really need to be putting an emphasis on line managers now because more and more people are going to be struggling as we can see from my survey. So if somebody starts a conversation and the response to that conversation is quite negative, that could really put off that person seeking further support. So make sure your line managers are equipped with the skills that they need. And then I think lastly, just to say that the culture piece is so important. I think we had started to see employers do more before COVID-19, but I think what we were seeing is that lots of employers were still doing what we would call the low hanging fruit, rolling out some training, doing some awareness days. But we fundamentally need to think about the way that we design work, the way that we design jobs, flexible working, the way that we design offices. And I think COVID-19 is really going to help us think about some of the positive things that we have done during this time that could really change the way that we design work in the future. So we need to kind of move a little bit away from the low hanging fruit, start thinking about the systemic changes we need to make and think about the drivers of poor mental health in the workplace. And then the last point that I just wanted to make is, even though we didn't ask the question directly in our coronavirus survey, we have heard from loads of people that they're really, really feeling anxious about returning to work and actually what that return to work might look like. So I've obviously um, asked the poll question here just to kind of get an idea of what is worrying people in, in terms of returning to work. And I think this kind of resonates with what's coming up in our survey that there's fears of actually still catching the virus. So from an employer perspective, if you are asking people to return to work, your communication strategy around how you're going to keep them safe is not only about their physical safety, but it's around their mental health safety as well. Um, and yeah, I think here having to go back to a normal work routine, we do have to recognise that for some people, working from home in this way has actually had a positive impact on their mental health. Not having to get on the tube, not having to get, you know, travel for long hours, you know, being helpful to have a bit more control over your day. Um, and so we have to recognise that for every individual, the impact is going to be different. And although if you work in a huge organisation, asking every single individual how they feel about it is a huge task, what you need to do is you need to understand some of the themes and worries about people returning to work as well. So I'll finish there, but just to say that MIND have a huge amount of information around mental health and coronavirus on our website. And we also have a website called the Mental Health at Work website. And that's a website for anybody that wants to know anything about mental health at work. And we have lots of stuff on there around coronavirus as well. So please do use mine, use our expertise. And thank you very much today for raising money for us because our services are in demand more than ever at the moment. Thank you.